solving radicals. So what we've done with radicals already is we've added and subtracted radicals, we've multiplied radicals, we've divided radicals, and now we're going to solve radicals. Whenever it says solve, it doesn't matter what unit you're in, it doesn't matter what math course you're ever in, if it says solve, what it's wanting is what does the variable equal? That's what solve means. Solve means I'm going to give you a variable or two, and you're going to have to say x equals number. Box it. That's what solve means. Ultimately, what the heck does the variable equal? So we're going to look at this one. Specific outcome. Solve problems with radical equations or solving radical equations. So here we have 4x minus 7 equals 13. The square root of 4x minus 7 equals 13. And then I put... Um, Behind it, x has to be greater than 0. Why? Because Yes, and if x is 0, it should be greater than or equal to. Yeah. There can be an equal to sign because x can, it can take the square root of a 0, right? But you can't take square root of negative numbers. If I pick anything less than or um, not equal to 0, like negative 1, let's say, It'd be 4 times negative 1, which would get me a negative under the square root, which you can't have. So that's why the statement is there. So what we do next is we want to isolate the radical. That's the first step always. Isolate the radical. What does that mean? Get the radical by itself. What does that mean? Move everything that is not the radical to the other side. So we have a minus 7. We're going to add 7 to both sides so that these cancel off. So now I have square root 4x equals 20. Is it isolated on one side? Yep. Step one, done. Step two, eliminate the root. For a square root, raise both sides of the equation to an exponent of 2. Because if it's a square root and you want to get rid of a square root, you can square it. Square root and the square root cancel. So I square this side, the square root, and the square cancel. I square this side. Because what I do to one side, I have to do the other, right? So the squared and the square root cancel, I get 4x equals 20 squared, which is 400. Then 3 is to solve or isolate the variable. So what am I going to do? I'm going to divide by 4 both sides, and I get x equals 100. Then I always have to check. This is not an option. Like People are like, oh, it's optional. I can check and see if I'm right. No, you have to check because sometimes you get an answer, and it actually does not work with a radical. So you plug it in, and if the left side equals the right side, you're good. If the left side does not equal the right side, then the answer you got does not actually work. It's called extraneous. Yeah? How do you get rid of, like, the um, like greater than equals? Uh, That's not greater than or equal. They're not getting rid of that. That's just a statement. That says x is greater, greater than or equal to 0. It's just a statement. To use this equation, x has to be greater than or equal to 0, or I can't do the solving. Yeah, it's just a restriction on the domain. So I'm going to check it. Where do I check it? I always check it back into the original. Nothing I've touched. So the original is square root 4x minus 7. I'm just going to write it up here. Square root 4x minus 7 equals 13. That is the original, correct? 13 is the right side. It will carry on the right side. This is the left side. It will carry down the left side. When you check, you don't move anything from right to left. What's on the left stays on the left, what's on the right stays on the right, and you just plug in. So, I have square root 4x minus 7 is on my left side, or right on my left side. On my right side, I write 13. These need to be equal. So when I plug the 100 in, I get square root 4 times 100 minus 7. Right? And that should equal 13. Okay, do some more math. Square root 400 minus 7 should equal 13. The square root of 400 is 20 minus 7, which equals 13. And what do I have in the end? 13 equals 13. And so I can say left side, LS, this is the only short form you're allowed to use, LS equals RS. And you know you're good, and then you know this is your answer and it works. So you have to check and see if left side equals right side, always. Because sometimes you get an answer, and the left side doesn't equal the right side, and it's actually extraneous. So it doesn't work. Boom. Not good. For a cube root, you have to raise both sides to the exponents 3. Say square the cube root of 4x equals 20. Let's try this one. So if we have the cube root of 4x equals 20, 
See, I don't have a restricted domain because I can have negatives under a key root. It's totally fine. Now, you still have to do the same rules. One, isolate the variable. Or isolate the square root, sorry. It's isolated. Then, I have to get rid of the cube root. So, I cube a cube root to get rid of it. Then I get 4x equals 2 cubed is 8, 0 cubed is 3 zeros. Because you're technically cubing a 10. Divide by 4. X equals 2,000. So it's great I got an answer, but what do I always have to do at the end? Check it. So I'm going to go cube root of 4x equals 20. You don't have to write left side or close right side if you don't want to till the end. I'm just going to go like this. Then I'm going to fill in, I'm checking x equals 2,000. So I'm going to go to the cube root of 4 times 2,000 equals 20. Do you see how the 20 is on the right-hand side? It will just stay on the right-hand side. Do you see how everything else is on the left? It just stays on the left. So I'm going to do the cube root of 8,000. You know where the cube root button is? You can go math. Press the math button. And number... Four. Math number four. I'm going to go 8,000. Cross your fingers and toes and hope that it's 20. What is it? 20. So I get 20, because this works as 20, equals 20. Left side, LS equals RS. Just good practice for 30. And then I box it because it's right. Then we're going to flip over. Examples to solve using the steps above, well, steps of previous page. In each case, solve and state the restrictions. So this one here, when we go to state the restriction, it's not y is greater than or equal to 0. Because there's no just y here, is there? There's a y minus 1. So what you're going to do is you're going to do this. You're going to take what's underneath it, you're going to go y minus 1, and that has to be what? Greater than or equal to? Zero. And then we just solve for y. How do I solve for y? Add 1. y has to be greater than or equal to 1. There, I did my restriction. So you just take what's underneath the square root sign and say it has to be greater than or equal to 0, right? Because you can't have a negative underneath. Now, what was my first step? What did I tell you you had to do? You have to isolate the radical. So I need to get the radical by itself. What, what's sitting with it that needs to go away? The plus 7. So I need to subtract 7. So now I have square root y minus 1 equals 6. So first step, get radical by itself. By itself, by itself. English, top notch. Okay, step two, get rid of radical. How do I get rid of a square root? Square it. And when I do it to one side, I have to do it to the other side. So I square this one. I square this one. I square the square root, and I get y minus 1 equals 36. So step one, isolate radical. Step two, get rid of radical. Step three, solve for variable. What do I have to do? Now I'm just in normal grade 10 math again. Yeah. Add one. 
y equals 37. Before I box it, what must I do? Check. So I have my original, which is square root y minus 1 plus 7 equals 13. And I'm checking for y equals 37. So I'm going to get square root 37 minus 1 plus 7 equals 13. Now everything on the left stays on the left, everything on the right stays on the right. We never cross over on a check. So I'm not going to subtract the 7 over. Do you see that? Cannot do that. It's like there's an electric fence running down the middle of your equal signs. If you cross over on a check, you'd zap yourself. Okay? So we're going to subtract 7. Would we do that? Can we cross over? No, I just died. I zapped myself. Don't kill yourself. Okay? So I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go square root 36 plus 7 equals 13. What's the square root of 36? 6 plus 7 equals 13. So what do I get? 13 equals 13. So left side, LS, equals RS. Now I can box it. Okay, you try the second one. This one over here. Then we're going to get to ones that turn into quadratics. That's so exciting. So this one, we're going to isolate the radical first. We subtract 1. So we get root 7x equals 14. Then I have to get rid of the square root by squaring it. 7x equals, what's 14 squared? Divide by 7 x equals 28. Then we have to check it before we block it. So we're going to get square root 7 times 28 plus 1 equals 15. 7 times 28 is 196. Then we get 14 plus 1 equals 15. 15 equals 15. Left side equals right side. Okay. Oh, I did. Good call. 7x has to be greater than or equal to 0. Divide by 7. When I divide by a negative, the inequality sign flips, but it's not negative. The next two boxes, we're going to get quadratics, which means we're going to use last unit. Because didn't we solve quadratics all last unit? That's all we did. We literally solved quadratics by quadratic formula or by factoring. We solved the quadratic or using our calculator. And then we did discriminants of nature and roots. So our first step is still the same. Isolate the radical. Everyone paying attention? Don't lose people. Isolate the radical. Is it isolated? Yes. Yeah. Check one. Done. Easy. Step two, get rid of the square root by squaring. Now, until this moment, on the other side of the equation from the square root has always been just a number. We'd square a number with golden, right? Easy. But this time we're actually going to square a what? Variable. A variable, which means m is going to be squared. Which if m is squared, it's a quadratic. That's why. So whenever we solve radicals in the one side or the other side is um, a variable, you're going to get a quadratic. So the other side of these ones were numbers. So I'm going to square this side, square this side. The squared cancels out the square root. And I'm left with m squared equals 2 minus m. What do I have to do when I have an m squared or an x squared? Move everything to one side and set equal to zero. zero every single time. So what we learned in all last unit, that's what we're going to do. So we have a squared, we need to move everything to it. So we're going to subtract 2, add m. Subtract 2, add m. So I'm going to get m squared plus m minus 2 equals 0. I will never choose the quadratic formula first. I'm only using it if I can't factor. Because if I can factor this, it's a heck of a lot easier. It's product sum. Right? 
So I'm going to say what times what equals negative 2, what plus what equals, I'm going to do it off to the side. What times what equals negative 2, what plus what equals 1. Anything? Two and negative one. And I don't even have to decomp because there's a one in front of my m squared. So I'm going to go m plus two, m minus one. What's my next step from last unit? Set each equal to zero. m plus two equals zero. m minus one equals zero. Subtract two m equals negative 2, add 1, m equals 1. Now I don't have to check 1, I have to check 2. Not at the same time, you check 1, see if it works, check the other one, see if it works. So I'm going to check them below here. So I fill them into my original, correct? Always the original. So I'm going to get negative 2 equals the square root of 2 minus negative 2. So negative 2 equals the square root of 4. Negative 2 equals 2. Okay, left side equals right side. Is that true? Does negative 2 equal 2? No. So I put say, no they don't. And then this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to this answer. I'm going to circle it. But does it work? No, I'm going to circle it, and I'm going to put a line through it. And I'm going to say extraneous. E-X-T-R-A-N-E-O-U-S. It's extraneous. It's, some people will say um, it does not exist. No, it exists. It just doesn't work. And what does that mean when it exists and doesn't work? It's extraneous. Then I'm going to check the M equals 1. So I'm going to do 1 equals square root 2 minus 1. 1 equals the square root of 1. 1 equals 1. Did that one work? Yeah. yeah. Left side equals right side. I just box it. This is the only answer. So if it was a multiple choice answer, I could ask you two things. I could ask 1. One way I could ask the question is, determine the solution to this or solve this. And the solution would be n equals 1, correct? Or I could say, determine the extraneous root. And what would be your multiple choice answer? m equals negative 2. So I can ask you to solve it, and then it would m equals 1. Or I could ask for the extraneous root, and you would tell me it's m equals negative 2. I could ask it either way, right? You guys try. Well, we'll go do this one together. What's the first thing I do for this one? Isolate square root. What am I going to do? Restrictions as well. This one, sorry, I should have done restrictions. 2 minus m is greater than or equal to 0. 2 is greater than or equal to m, because I can just add the m over. This one, I go do my restriction. It would just be n has to be greater than or equal to 0. Done. I have to isolate the square root. So I need to move the n, correct? How do I move a positive n? Subtract n. So I'm going to get negative root n equals 2 minus n. How do I get rid of the negative 1 in front? Divide by negative 1. Then I divide this one by negative 1. Then I divide this one by negative 1. So I get square root n equals negative 2 plus n. Did I get the square root by itself? Is the square root on its own? Yeah. Step 1, done. Step 2, get rid of the square root. How do I get rid of the square root? Square it.
cancels. Uh oh. What happens when I get a squared on a binomial? What's the first thing you should do? Your teacher taught this last year. I've taught it a whole bunch of times. Yeah, you write it out twice. You cross that little two off and write it out twice so that you can foil. You don't miss the middle term. If that's pretty, you square or square root, it's gone. I have n equals, and now I need to FOIL, negative 2 times negative 2, positive 4. Negative 2 times n, negative 2n. n times negative 2, negative 2n. n times n, positive n squared. can simplify this side so I get n equals 4. Negative 2n, negative 2n is negative 4n plus n squared. I have a square. What do I need to do? Move everything to one side set equal to 0. That's from last unit. That's why you learned last unit first, then this one. So I'm going to subtract the n over. I'm going to put them in nice order. So I'm going to go 0 equals n squared first, minus 4n, minus 1n, minus 5n, plus 4. Then I say what times what equals first times last, 4, what plus what equals middle, negative 5. If you have any friends or siblings or anyone who's in grade 10 that you know, can you tell them how important factoring is? How many times do we use factoring? Too much. Every single unit. Or too much, as Anna would say. Every single unit. It comes up every single unit. The grade 10s need to know that. They don't listen to us teachers. They're like, okay, sure, sure, sure. You'll be like, dude, every unit. Learn your factoring. So important. What multiplies to give you 4 and adds to give you negative 5? Negative 4 and? I heard someone say it. Negative 1. Do I have to do decomposition? No, there's a 1 in front. This is the greatest thing ever. I can go right to brackets. n minus 4, n minus 1. Then we were taught that each equal to 0 and solve. n minus 4 equals 0. n minus 1 equals 0. Add the 4 over n equals 4. Add the 1 over n equals 1. Should I box them right now? No, I must check. Not a ton of room, but I have to check it into the original. The original is n minus root n equals 2. So I'm going to plug it into there. So n, n is 4, minus root n, root 4, equals 2. 4 minus 2 equals 2. 2 equals 2. Yay! This one worked. Ls equals rs, I should say. And I have to try the 1. Now, what happens is both could work and be perfectly fine. Both could be extraneous. One could be extraneous and one could be good. There's no like every time one's extraneous and one's not. Okay? Both could work. Both could check and be perfect. Both could check and suck and be extraneous and no answers. Then there'd be no solution. Or one could work and one couldn't. Okay? There's no set way of So we're trying the one. So we're going to go one. So n minus the square root of one equals two. 1 minus 1 is 0 equals 2. Is that true? No. So what do I do? I happen to have one work and one not work again, but that's not always the case. Sometimes both work. I'm going to circle it. I'm going to put a big line through it, and I'm going to say extraneous. You get close to spelling extraneous right, and I can read it. Yay. Good mark. If you spell extraterrestrial, that is not extraneous, no marks, okay? If you just spell extraneous wrong, but it says extraneous, I can, good. If it says, like, 
extra good burger. No good. Something wrong. Okay? All right. This is the biggest kahuna of them all. No, I did the extra restrictions at the top. For once. Yes. Okay. The great thing about this one is it has no restrictions because it's an addition of squares. Nothing's going to cause me any problems. Nothing's going to cause me any issues. So I don't have to worry about that one. So I'll make you only state restrictions when it's uh, linear anyways, just so you know. I won't be mean. Okay. But next year you'll have to state restrictions of quadrat. So my first step is to isolate the radical. I'm going to start it over here because that's just not enough work. Boom. Isolate the radical. Boom. First step done. I'm so awesome. I don't know why I just kicked that question out, but whatever. We're going to pretend it's still there. Done. First step. I'm so good. Yay. Second step is to isolate the radical. Get rid of the radical. Was my second step. How do I get rid of the radical? Square it. Square this one. Square this one. Oh, crud. What happens with this one? This is left taught us that we have a binomial squared. We cross out the two and rewrite it. This is the best day ever. This one just crosses off. Like that one's great. Thank you very much. Left hand side. You are awesome. So on the left hand side, I have 3x plus 2. The square root canceled the squared. Yay! The right hand side, I got some work to do. I rewrote a binomial twice. If I rewrite a binomial twice, I foil. So I go 2x times 2x is 4x squared. 2x times 1 is 2x. 2x times 1 is 2x. 1 times 1 is 1. So I'm going to get 3x plus 2 equals 4x squared like like terms, plus 4x, plus 1. I have a squared. What must I do when I have a squared? Move everything to one side, set equal to 0. Yes. So I'm going to subtract my 3x over to the squared. I'm going to subtract my 2. And then I'm going to have 0 equals 4x squared. 4x minus 3x is plus 1x minus 1. Why is there so much room? Quadratic formula. Yeah. X squared down under the root. This squared? Yeah. No, the squared cancels out the square root symbol, not that. Oh no! 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 Oh. <laughs> this time you may have been right. You may have been right, Wedderburn. Okay. You chose then to tell me, hey? When I was really into the depths of it. This can be nicer. So we'll just be appreciative of that in the end. Oh, squared. I just didn't write the stupid squared. So we have to subtract the 3x squared, which will make this not be a decomp or a quadratic formula. Let's hope. Let's hope. Minus 2. So we have 0 equals x squared plus 4x minus 1. So we have escaped the decomp. We have still not escaped the quadratic formula. It's the large box. Here it's not. Okay. Anything. Let's go. So this is A equals 1. This is B equals 4. And this is C equals negative 1. Quadratic formula. Great thing about quadratic formulas, you don't really have to check your answers at the end because they won't be extraneous because really ugly and kind of definitely. All right. X equals. Negative b, four. plus or minus the square root of b squared, 4 squared, minus 4 times a 
times c all over the whole numerator over 2 times 1. x equals negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 16 minus minus 4, 16 plus 4. You could just type it all in. I'm doing it in splits. x equals negative 4 plus or minus root 20 over 2. What is root 20 to break into? 4 and 5. You're right. Good job. It's a really weird voice you have there, right? And then 2 root 5. So we get x equals negative 4 plus or minus 2 root 5 over 2, and I'm done. No, no what do I have to do? Take a 2 out. 2 divided by 2 is 1. 2 divided by 2 is 1. Negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2. So x equals negative 2 plus or minus root 5. Call it a day. Box that baby. Okay. Huh? What? Oh, it is. You could check it, but the quadratic ones are first. Okay. Okay. Ah, oh, double radicals. <laughs>